everybody. We're about to get started. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate y'all taking the time and effort to come to Cersei and to be at our press conference today. My name is Allison Bragg. I'm an assistant U.S. attorney for the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Arkansas. And we're going to begin our press conference to tell you about an operation that took place today in the White County area. There will be more details about that from some of the leaders from our organizations that I'll introduce to you here in a moment. Uh, we will begin with comments from our acting United States Attorney, Jonathan Ross. Good afternoon. Today we're announcing for the citizens who live here in White County that a series of related federal indictments charging a total of 33 defendants were returned by a federal grand jury meeting in Little Rock last week in a case which we call Operation Central Sweep. This morning, a team of local, state, and federal investigators successfully arrested 17 of those defendants. And when I say successful, I'm, I mean that it was safe. There was no one hurt. These defendants were charged with conspiring to distribute methamphetamine, charged with possessing firearms in connection to those methamphetamine offenses, and then, of course, charged with actual distribution of methamphetamine. Operation Central Sweep is an intentional, well-planned strike at a drug organization and its affiliates who have been operating throughout White County and the surrounding areas. This group, we believe, and the evidence will show, has operated with general impunity throughout North Central Arkansas for at least a decade, distributing large quantities of methamphetamine. The evidence presented to the grand jury that returned the indictments demonstrates that, that, that the group is responsible for distributing, distributing over uh, multi-kilo quantities of methamphetamine in places like Searcy, Bald Knob, Jetsonia, McRae, and Pangburn here in White County, also in Augusta and Woodruff County, Helena, West Helena, and Phillips County, and Conway and Faulkner County. The investigation was a joint operation led by the DEA, the ATF, Homeland Security, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, the Searcy Police Department, the White County Sheriff's Office, the Central Arkansas Drug, Drug Task Force, and the 17th Judicial District Prosecuting Attorney's Office. I want to also highlight the following agencies who assisted in today's arrest operations to include the Arkansas State Police, the Arkansas Highway Police, the Arkansas Department of Corrections, the Arkansas National Guard Counter Drug Unit, the Lone Oak County Sheriff's Office, the Prairie County Sheriff's Office, the U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the U.S. Probation Office, and the 20th Judicial District Drug Task Force. The resolve by each of these law enforcement entities to serve the public and protect public safety is remarkable. And to watch them come together today and throughout the previous months as they've worked on today's investigation to combine their efforts and resources to safely investigate and apprehend these defendants is a humbling honor. We are so fortunate that these good men and women choose to commit their lives to our common good and the rule of law. Now, Ms. Bragg, uh, our Assistant U.S. Attorney and Public Information Officer that you already heard from, she's going to be introducing each of these law enforcement partners who worked so hard today to make this day happen. And then following their comments, she will be addressing any questions from the media concerning today's announcement. Thank you. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Ross. I want to move on to our next speaker for today. And in doing that, I'd like to point out that this investigation began when concerns were raised back in April of 2020 about activity that had been taking place in Searcy and in the White County area. And when that happened, one person who was instrumental in getting the ball rolling in this operation was the chief of police of the Searcy Police Department. And his name is Steve Hernandez, and he's going to say a few things now. Thank you. Um, let me start out by thanking all the agencies that were involved today. Um, as you said, it was done safely and without everybody and um, their help, this would not have went off like it did. Uh, just over two years ago, I was appointed chief of police of the Searcy Police Department and I knew coming in that um, we had some issues uh, with crime. Um, two of those issues, one being gang activity and another being the sales of methamphetamines. Um, 
with my title of Cersei Police Chief, I also carry the title of the Central Arkansas Drug Task Force Commander. Um, the Central Arkansas Drug Task Force is, it actually consists of Lone Oak County Sheriff's Office, Prairie County Sheriff's Office, uh, White County Sheriff's Office, and the Searcy Police Department. Um, together, they're kind of the heart of this. Uh, you've heard a lot of organizations that did not do it by themselves by no means, but they were the heart of this, um, this operation. Um, we want this to be a lesson to anybody that may be considering gang activity in our area or the sales of narcotics in our area, that we are taking this very seriously and um, if you are considering coming into our area to do this type of criminal activity that you may be on our next list um, for our next um, central sweep central sweep two, whatever we decide to call it at that time thank you another person who was instrumental in the instigation of operation central sweep is the white county sheriff Philip Miller, who will make a few remarks now. Thank you for your time today. I'll be brief. I just want to echo the comments that have already been made about our thanks to all the agencies that uh, participated, helped to make this uh, successful and safe. You know, White County has been on the bubble uh, many times in the past and currently as a place where methamphetamines are traffic methamphetamines are sold and today makes a statement to those that are selling the methamphetamines that uh, we're coming after you you know this represents months and months and untold number of man hours of the dedicated men and women that work uh, in our communities every day uh, trying to, to rid our communities of this crime these these crimes with methamphetamine drugs gang activities and today is not the end of this operation. Today is not the end of what we're going to do. Today is just a, another day, and here forward, we go forward every day, the men and women that make up that thin blue line of law enforcement in White County, along with our partners across the state, across the nation, to make that statement that uh, we are not here to allow you to just go unfettered in White County as you traffic methamphetamine, as you engage with your gun sales and gun trades. And so I just want to once more thank all the agencies that helped make this happen successfully today. Thank you. Based on the leadership of the Searcy Police Department and the White County Sheriff's Office, they were able to form some teamwork with federal agencies. And those are some of the people that we'll hear from now, one important factor about this case is that leading up to today's charges, and there were 33 people federally indicted, before these cases came to be, the individuals that are involved in these cases had collectively been arrested a total of over 500 times before federal charges were brought. And so it's important that we now introduce some of the federal agencies that were able to make that happen. Uh, one of the first people that you'll hear from on that regard is Tom Fisher. He's from the Drug Enforcement Administration and he is the Acting Assistant Special Agent in Charge. <coughs> Thank you, Allison. So this operation, which started about a year ago, is really an example, and we've heard it already said, of what true partnership is. I mean, the partnerships that we have with our state and our local and our federal counterparts are crucial. They're crucial for the citizens of this county. They're crucial for the, the, the citizens for Searcy, and they're very crucial for the citizens of the state of Arkansas. Uh, these citizens, they, they deserve to live without fear and intimidation from violent drug traffickers. Um, for DEA, this community impact investigation is a priority. It's a priority for us. It's a priority for the state of Arkansas uh, and for DEA's mission as a whole. Uh, thank you to the agencies that stand before you and the men and the women that have provided their assistance during the course of this investigation, without whom none of this would be possible. Um, so we appreciate their assistance and uh, thank you. Another federal agency that played a very significant role 
in this operation is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF. One important component of this case is that of the 33 people that were indicted prior to today, 44 firearms were seized. And I'm not a mathematician, but that's more guns than it is defendants. So it's significant that these guns have been taken off the streets of Searcy and of the White County area. Um, one person who's here to speak to you from the ATF is William McCreary, and he serves as the assistant special agent in charge for ATF. Thank you. Uh, I am Will McCurry. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for ATF, the New Orleans Field Division. Uh, ATF is the federal law enforcement uh, agency within the Department of Justice that, among our other tasks, protects our communities from violent crime and criminal organizations who illegally use firearms. ATF is proud to stand with our partners, state, federal, local, against drug and violent gang crimes uh, in our communities. In this case, before today, as you heard, there were 44 other firearms seized, and there were six seized today during the arrests, um, one of which uh, was equipped with a suppressor. This case is a great example of the cooperative law enforcement that we have, not just in central Arkansas, but across the state. Um, it is an example of cooperative law enforcement at its best. And rest assured, we will continue to work together to address crimes committed by the worst of the worst. Thank you. One component of many drug investigations that a lot of people don't realize is that often drug traffickers will rely on the Postal Service and will abuse that service in order to send drugs and drug paraphernalia through the mail. And so that's why it's vitally important that we have the involvement of the United States Postal Inspection Service. And to speak to that, with us today we have Mr. Tom Noyes. He serves as the inspector in charge of the USPIS. Thank you. At, with the Postal Inspection Service, one of our um, main goals is to rid narcotics from the mail. And through our mission to protect not only the, the Postal Service, our employees, but our customers. And I think today is a great example how the customers, um, the community here um, is being protected. And obviously with the, uh, the collaboration of all agencies involved, be it um, state, local, federal, just goes to show when you come together what can be done to help the community. And so great work by, um, great work by the many that um, have been involved. We thank uh, especially to the U.S. Attorney's Office for recognizing this um, with the narcotics, the violent crime, and to uh, prosecute the many um, involved. Thank you. <laughs> We have several leaders from additional agencies that are here, also from the United States Postal Inspection Service. Mona Hernandez is here. She serves as a team leader with Postal Inspection Service. Also working with us today is William Steele with Homeland Security Investigations, who also played a vital part in today's operations. And Mr. Steele operates as the resident agent in charge for HSI. Also present with us today is Aaron Anderson, and he is the counter drug coordinator with the Arkansas National Guard counter drug program. I want to make sure that I did not leave anybody out, and everyone has masks on, so sometimes it's hard for me to see if I mentioned everybody or not. But I, I hope I think that I've mentioned all of our leaders who are standing here with us today. And if you have any questions about them or their titles or their roles, I'd be happy um, to get you that information later. That concludes our planned remarks for today, and if there are any questions, I would be happy to take those at this time. Can you explain a little bit about the, the guns seized or the, the weapons? I mean, it's just like a, a scattering of some of the ones you collected. Right. You heard some comments today that there were uh, 44 firearms seized prior to today's takedown. These are firearms that, if I understand correctly, were seized today. Um, these firearms, while we cannot get into the specificity of from whom they were seized and which individuals had these, 
We can tell you some of the comments that have already been made. For example, this is a firearm with a silencer on the end. That's an illegal modification that makes you a firearm, and that's something that was recovered today. Were those 40 plus guns that were recovered prior to today all a part of Operation Central Suite? Yes, the 44 guns that were recovered prior to today were recovered from people who were indicted with the indictments being unsealed today. So, yes. so how long has this been going? Uh, how long has the operation been going? Operation Central Sweep was instigated in April of 2020. At that time, it was not yet Operation Central Sweep. At that time, it was law enforcement in Searcy needing to address the problem of increased violent crime. A lot of people are aware that in the year leading up to that, there had been about seven shootings. And leadership here in Cersei said, that is not what we're about, and we're not going to have that. And we need to start taking steps to address it. And those steps resulted in Operation Central Sweep. Um, and I believe you said, was it 33 total defendants were indicted today, 17 arrested. Uh, so where do you stand on the remainder? Correct. 17 were arrested today, eight were in state custody prior to arrest being made today, and that leaves eight that are currently unaccounted for. We would consider them to be in fugitive status. And I can get you their names and hopefully get you a photo, and we would love the public's assistance in helping us locate any fugitives that are currently unaccounted for. We appreciate all of you being here, and if there are no more questions, that concludes our press conference. Thank you. One more. Oh, Is sorry. there any more you can expand on in just in terms of the gang activity that we've seen here in White yes. County? Um, as I mentioned, the April of 2020 considerations were sort of a turning point that led us to this point. Mm -hmm. And when investigators started looking into those activities, they came back time and time again to an organization known as the Gangster Disciples. They learned that members of that organization, as well as people associated with that organization, had distributed and we seized over 105 pounds of methamphetamine in addition to 3.3 pounds of cocaine. Investigating those activities led to the identification and location of the 33 people that were ultimately indicted. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you all.